Hey guys, what is up? Sam or Scorpio here and welcome to my storyline breakdown on what we know of Black Ops 4 Zombies so far. This is going to be kind of focusing on IX and Voyager Despair, our two mats with our brand new crew. We're not really going to be going into Blood of the Dead here because that's not quite so relevant to this new storyline. So obviously before we go into these two maps, which do from our two trailers are very rich in storyline and I can't wait to see where these go forward. But first I think it's very important we get introduced to our crew. First we have the only female in the group being Scarlet, who is shown to be kind of a tech expert who we know has made some of our own inventions in the past which are used in these trailers. We see Bruno who is actually from France, he is kind of the tough bruiser kind of character taking out security, clearly very strong. We see Shaw, who is our older character. He's kind of likely going to be the brains of the group, kind of our Richtof and kind of character. We see him keeping time, keeping track of the whole operation, so he's likely going to be running things around there. And finally, Diego, who isn't really shown to have a huge amount of the role, but he kind of sounds to be Spanish from his voice. He's a very smug guy, very kind of handsome character, a bit of a ladies' man. We see him flirting with a woman at the start of the trailer as part of the operation they're on. And, yeah, we don't really know a huge amount about these characters yet. It's still very early days on them. We'll know more as things go on. But I guess, yeah, let's start breaking down our two trailers. So in the trailer for IX, we see our four characters, Bruno, Short, Scarlet, and Diego, in some kind of underground area of a broken down building where they're kind of working with some kind of alchemical liquids. And each of them actually inhale the fumes of these after kind of experimenting about with it a bit. They inhale these fumes and we see Diego's eyes go into some kind of trance it appears to be. And then the characters are seen to appear in full gladiator armor with war paint. And they are behind bars looking into the arena in what appears to be kind of an ancient Rome or Greek Colosseum. Where a masked man is standing in the middle of an arena before a crowd where they are about to form this kind of ritual. The whole crowd are shown to be kind of wearing these similar masks, suggesting that that's kind of a big part of this culture. Possibly some kind of cult that we have to do with this here, who are kind of interested in this idea of reviving the dead and generally the zombies, as there is an artifact scene which you know, there's an artifact itself in this which appears to be responsible for the resurrection of the zombies. Not just 115 here, we see kind of a group of chained people being dragged into the ring as the priest is handed this mystic artifact, which when activated gives off this awesome large storm-like effect. And then we see these people turn into these zombies and generally be transformed. A set of gladiators, not our four characters, are then actually released into the arena and towards these hordes of zombies, clearly to fight them for the entertainment of the crowd, however they're massacred very quickly, and once our four characters enter the ring, they begin to knock down hordes of zombies, and however, last but not least, one of the chained men who had not yet turned into a zombie, appears to have a large mutated zombie come out of them, spitting acid. This is probably going to be our boss zombie in this map. This is very interesting stuff, obviously. We don't really know a huge amount about what's kind of causing this, apart from the kind of alchemical links from the robes that the characters appear to be wearing, these masked men. It's likely that this is linked to cult kind of culture, some kind of cult who are interested in reviving the dead. Very interesting stuff here. Now, since this actually appears as if they haven't gone back in time, but this is more a vision kind of thing, it's likely the reason they have chosen to go into this vision is actually set before Voyage of Despair and is them interested in gaining information about how these zombies are resurrected and the fate they are facing today and yeah in a completely different era very very interesting kind of links here between times it's possible that this masked man is also then seen later in the trailer so there is kind of some suggestion he may in fact be immortal and yeah, is generally obsessed with continuing this cause. And last but not least, let's move on to Voyage of Despair, where the trailer opens up and we are seen to have our four characters are on a boat at some very expensive kind of event, where we see men and women drinking champagne, and Diego is talking to a high-class rich woman who's said to be out of his league and, you know, a bit above him. 
and we, you know he's kind of using his looks and handsomeness to kind of flirt with this woman where he actually manages to steal a key from her purse to a millionaire suite which he manages to pass on to the others. Shaw is kind of seen to be timing the events and is kind of like the smartest of the group, a bit like Richtoff and running the operation they seem to be conducting some kind of heist which is actually to get into a safe which obviously we progress towards here. We see then Bruno enters the millionaire suite with Shaw using the key that they were just passed and he manages to knock out the security with ease to say the least due to his kind of above average strength whilst Shaw actually uses some kind of pneumatic tube system which was often used in olden times to pass messages across areas I believe there was they were often found beneath cities in fact between police departments occasionally within the United States but here it is to pass messages and stuff down to the cargo room from the upper areas of the ship and he in fact uses it to pass down a gas grenade which knocks down the people down there so that Scarlet can then enter using her technology which she says to have invented herself to break into a thick steel safe. It is then said that on his travels, Scarlet's father has made some enemies. It is likely that he has had an interest in the cause of these artifacts that had been used to resurrect people, create the undead, and it is possible that one of the enemies is the bald man that we then see, who is hidden beneath the hood, looking at images of our four characters. There are symbols on these robes which resemble the alchemical symbols from the teaser images that had been seen previously as well as the masked people in the IX map arena. So it is possible, this is why I say, that this could be the same man and he is immortal. He is part of this kind of cult who is fascinated by these artifacts and the undead. We then see Scala, who manages to recover what she wanted from the safe. This is the same item that was used to create the zombies. Whilst others suggest taking items from the safe, some of the more valuable items, Scarlet says no as they aren't thieves but they are instead focused around protecting humanity from evil. This man kind of appears, the bald man, who is kind of, he look, has a bit of a military kind of look to him. This kind of cultist kind of vibe that you get from him. But he comes in and tries to take this artifact from it which then is cornered. But before they can manage to take him down, he activates it and we see people across the ship being turned into zombies. Now, it's likely that the fact that because we actually see here, the artifact seems to disappear after it's used. We see this in IX2. This means it's very possible that there are multiple of these found throughout the globe and throughout history and there are one use items which create a huge number of these undead armies. Whilst we are seeing all these people transforming in the different areas of the boat through, you know, the cabins and everything, we actually see a portal kind of appearing around a certain group of people and some kind of altar coming out of it. It's possible this is, it's likely to do with the main quest and probably very important to it, but I think it's possible this could be this map's version of Pack-a-Punch, similar to the way Origins ones had a very different look. I think this one could have a similar kind of thing. Is at this point we see our characters fighting off hordes of zombies using kind of different special abilities so it's likely that from a gameplay perspective these people are going to have very different abilities each to do with grenades, melees, all of that kind of stuff. It's then revealed as the camera pans out that the ship is in fact the Titanic, the boat which obviously sank in 1912 on its only voyage meaning that this map is in 1912, so we're in the early 1900s here, so we're pre-World War One, way before where we were in a, in Black Ops 3, where we were, in fact, in the World War II kind of era. An iceberg then appears, which, as we know from history, goes on to sink the ship. It's very possible that as part of the quest, we may have to alter time to prevent the ship from sinking, or maybe we may have to even complete steps in a limited amount of time before the ship is able to sink. Also, we can make a lot of very interesting links here to real history from both these maps, IX being very ancient kind of times it appears to be, whereas Voyage of Despair is obviously in the early 1900s. And yeah, guys, that is all we appear to be able to get from these images. I hope this has helped you guys. If you're interested in the storyline, if this is how you make sure, leave a like down below to show your support. Leave a comment down below, let me know your theories, where you think this story is going. And make sure to subscribe for more videos and streams from me. And yeah, I'll see you on more Black Ops 4 videos. Bye!